Welcome to another edition of U.S. Farm Report, brought to you today and each weekday at this same time by members of the National Farmers Organization in this television viewing area. The National Farmers Organization is dedicated to raising and stabilizing farm prices through collective bargaining. Today's U.S. Farm Report is entitled Convention 1966. Leading today's discussion is Ed Shema, a farmer from Marengo, Iowa. Welcome to another edition of U.S. Farm Report. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that we appreciate this opportunity to visit with you today on behalf of the NFO members in your area that are sponsoring this program. Today's program will uh, delve into the uh, National Convention of the NFO that is coming up soon at Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and also somewhat into the structure of the organization. Uh, on today's panel are four farmers from eastern Iowa. I would like to introduce each of the uh, three other panelists, Maynard Rafferty from Powasheet County, Iowa, who is a dairy farmer, and Jim Buleen from Johnson County, Iowa, who is a general farmer, and Willis Rowell from Clayton County, Iowa, who also has a general farming operation. And I, of course, uh, am from Iowa County and uh, primarily raise uh, corn and hogs and uh, feeder pigs. Uh, the uh, program today is a little bit different than some of them that we've uh, had, yeah, that you have seen in the past on U.S. Farm Report. And uh, as I said, we want to go into the uh, convention that is coming up soon at Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I think one question that comes up in many people's mind is uh, why the NFO, what is the organization for, what does it stand for, and so on. Primarily, the NFO is an organization uh, our primary purpose is to raise and stabilize farm prices at a higher level than they are today. Uh, currently, the average farmer in the United States is getting only about 55% as much in terms of net income as the average city person. So this is the reason for the NFO primarily, to uh, raise and stabilize our prices. Uh, we have a, a, a specific program of doing this, and we'll, on past programs, we've gone into some of the details. We will be in the future also, but today we want to hit on the convention primarily. And I think at this point, I'll ask Willis Rowell uh, what is the purpose of the convention and what are some of the things going to be uh, discussed and so on. Willis? Well, Ed, it seems like uh, ever since the birth of the NFO uh, several years ago, when it gets about this time of year, along the 1st of November, and the harvesting is uh, getting underway real well, there seems to be an air of enthusiasm, an air of anticipation, take over the farm area, especially the NFO organized area. Does our people realize now there is one total answer to their uh, economic problem out on the farm, and that is the NFO collective bargaining program. So they start to build their enthusiasm early to get to this convention, which normally is about the first week in December. This year it will be December 7th and 8th at Milwaukee. Uh, we've chosen Milwaukee this year. We've been around to uh, several of the large cities and the major farm areas in the past few years. We've been to Minneapolis, to St. Paul, to Des Moines, and now this year we're going to Milwaukee. And our people now are starting to elect their delegates at the county level. They recognize the significant gains we've made in bargaining this year. All of these things put together uh, lead up to what we might call a real exciting, uh, a real constructive convention. There's no way for us to go now except straight ahead, more organizing, more selling together, more bargaining together in order to stabilize our farm prices together. We expect this enthusiasm to keep building for the next few weeks. We expect many thousands of people to be in Milwaukee. Uh, for this great convention. I think now it would be interesting if we ask Maynard uh, why, uh, what his thoughts are about the coming convention. Thank you, Willis. Uh, I think we should uh, say the main purpose of the convention, as I think myself and most of us look at it, and uh, of course the uh, publicity that it gets, it always points to the election of our national president and the vice president, and that is uh, one important aspect of the convention. Uh, these men are, of course, elected every year for a one-year term, but there are several other things that I believe are even more important than this, and these include the seating of the board members uh, from the various states, 
Uh, these uh, national board of directors of the NFO meet approximately once a month, and their authority uh, is over the president of the National Farmers Organization. But even more than that, the National Convention sets the policies uh, through the uh, uh, writing and, and amending of the uh, bylaws of the National Farmers Organization and the uh, preparing uh, and adopting of the resolutions at the National Convention. And this uh, sets down the uh, guidelines, the, uh, the laws, if you will, by which our national officers have to operate within. And so uh, regardless of who may or may not be elected to our national officers, uh, they must abide by the policy set annually at the National Conve Convention. And so uh, we find that the supreme authority, according to our bylaws, rests in the National Convention, which of course is convened once a year. Between conventions, the supreme authority is in the National Board of Directors, and between meetings of the National Board of Directors, the supreme authority is in the uh, Executive Committee, and when the Executive Committee is not uh, uh, in session, then the supreme authority is with the president. But he, he is, of course, always subject to the policy made at the National Convention. Now, uh, at this point, I think uh, Jim Bulleen would, uh, could tell us how uh, delegates are elected and how uh, the officers are elected. Jim? Thank you, Maynard. The uh, delegates to the district, state, and national conventions of the National Farmers Organization are elected on the same basis in every county, in every state. The delegates are based proportionately on the number of members in each county. Now, this differs somewhat in the representation of some organizations in that they have one delegate per county. You can readily see that uh, in these, under such a representation such as this, if you have a county with a, just a few members in it, you, they would actually share in more representation than a county where they have several members. And this is a democracy in its truest form in the representation of delegates in the National Farmers Organization that all members share equal representation at convention time. And like Maynard has pointed out, at national convention time, the whole crux of the organization is formed and molded year by year. We've added to it in past years, and undoubtedly 1966 convention will be known different. Uh, at the national convention, the uh, national president and the vice president is elected for a one-year term, and this uh, executive, the president of the organization, carries out the executive duties, and as Maynard has pointed out, the national directors from the various states are seated, and they uh, formulate the policy and the executive department see that it, they are carried out. I uh, will also point out that uh, the president appoints the commodity heads and of the various departments of the grain, meat, and dairy departments. He, they are appointed by the president and are uh, passed upon and sworn into office by the board of directors. And I think this, in essence, uh, Ed takes care of the... Uh, I think uh, one important uh, point as far as the National Farmers Organization is concerned in the structure of the organization, and it, it differs from quite a few other organizations in that the delegates to the National Convention are elected directly from the county to the National Convention. In many organizations, you have a situation where the uh, delegates go to a district convention, and then the district convention elects delegates to the state convention, and then the state convention elects delegates to the National Convention. And I think many times in a structure of this sort that you can lose the uh, purpose and uh, the uh, original intent of the members out at the grassroots, so to speak, by going through all of these committees. And with the National Farmers Organization, the delegates are elected from the county and they go directly to the National Convention. And uh, as a result, I think you have more uh, truer representation of the people's true feelings out in the uh, country. Uh, who, uh, who all is uh, eligible to go to the uh, convention, Willis? Well, first, of course, uh, the first requirement is that you do be a member of the National Farmers Organization. And, of course, this limits our total convention to farmers, because only farmers uh, are allowed to be a member. This certainly is uh, the grandest method I know of, of directing 
of farmers directing their own farm policies. <clears throat> we heard these boys talk a little about the final election of the National Board of Directors from the various states. So I wonder if it wouldn't be nice to take a look at how this is done. The various states of the National Farmers Organization all through the Midwest a few weeks ago, and maybe there's a few conventions left, have their state convention. At these conventions, the, they elect, or they nominate, I should say, the men they feel they would like to have represent them on the National Board of Directors. This nomination then carries to the National Convention, which will this year will be December 7th and 8th at Milwaukee. And at this point, the total convention has to finalize the election of these state directors. This, in uh, effect, puts the final election of every man of the serving on the National Board of Directors in the hands of the delegates from every state that's represented there. The in, other, in, in other words, then, uh, Willis, say the uh, National Convention elects the delegates, and they are not only responsible to their state, but to all of the states in the NFO. Th this is right. We have had to lower all state barriers as far as uh, collective bargaining for agriculture. Uh, we notice that the volume buyers of agricultural products just don't pay any attention to state lines. So uh, if we're going to be volume sellers uh, and bargain for these uh, p fair prices for these commodities, certainly we can't stop at a state line. We've got to go nationwide in order to be in a good competitive position with our buyers. Well, Jim, what, uh, what does this involve then as far as uh, bargaining and marketing is concerned uh, on the national level as far as the NFO is concerned? Well, what it has really entailed, uh, Ed, over the past years is uh, a grand and glorious, I may add, uh, bargaining arrangement, which we have come up with at this time. And this is uh, one of the primary concerns why I'm glad to see National Convention roll around from the standpoint that uh, within our midst and our grips now, we have uh, some result that we can uh, focus our attention on in the way of our marketing arrangements and uh, is through this united effort across and over state lines as Willis has pointed out that we have organized in volume, moved this volume together and a group, bargained for it collectively and I might add it had for once in my lifetime meant dollars in my pocket and this is one of the greatest reasons why I'm glad to see National Convention time roll around once again, Ed. Uh, what are some of the uh, main points you, as far as the convention is concerned that you uh, get the most good out of, Jim? Well, naturally, it is uh, one of the greatest things that I like to see the National Convention roll around for is from the standpoint that this is when you as a member can actually voice your opinion in the operation of this farm organization. Like we pointed out earlier in the program, your representation through your delegate from your county or delegates, as they might be. And incidentally, they average somewhere, I would imagine, in the, from 20 to 30 delegates per county. You actually have a voice in the operation of this organization. And this is unique. For once in my lifetime, I actually have a say as to how my operation out here on the farm in the end result of selling my production is going to be handled and it has been my privilege to attend seven national conventions and I will say that the eighth one I'm looking forward to more than in the past for like I pointed out earlier earlier we have after long last achieved some great goals and I'll be able to go to the national convention and exchange news and notes and problems with my fellow friend from Indiana, Kentucky, Idaho, Illinois, you name it, throughout the Midwest. And this is one of the greatest reasons why I like to go to the National Convention, is to be able to talk to these farmers. For once, farmers get together and talk over a mutual problem, whereas in the past we've been pitted against one another. We were always more or less kept divided. We each had our own problems. And uh, now we've actually sat down and tried to do something about it cooperatively. I this think, Jim, it's uh, real interesting as uh, far as uh, the conventions are concerned. Uh, naturally, at every convention, there are uh, 
there are some differences of opinion, but I think our basic problem all over the United States is uh, we all have the same basic problem as farmers. And it's uh, interesting when we discuss some of these uh, various opinions and differences and so on, and when the thing is all said and done, we all come out with about the same idea that we need to do more in terms of marketing and so on. And uh, Willis, at this point, uh, could you elaborate just a little bit more on what this has been meant to farmers individually across the country? Well, of course, we've seen in the last uh, couple of years, since we started our marketing arrangements in meat, our volume sales in grain, uh, group sales all over the United States, certainly it's meant many, many dollars uh, in farm income. This is the reason we organized to start with. We've never lost sight of our goal. So we plan to put more and more dollars in farmers' pockets until we get them to a point where for a dollar's worth of work, they receive a dollar and nothing less. So I don't, I don't think, Ed, we're ever going to stop until we attain this. Uh, another thing that, uh, in thinking about the uh, uh, structure of the organization and also the National Convention is the uh, situation where each individual member or delegate may have ideas and so on that he's presented, presented to the, either the resolutions or bylaws committee or to the uh, other pertinent committees and uh, maybe uh, it was overridden by these committees. Uh, Jim, then what would be the, uh, if, you, if your idea was overridden, uh, could you do anything else about it, Tim? Yes, this is uh, one of the unique aspects of this organization, Ned, uh, and it makes you glad that uh, you belong to such an organization from the standpoint that if you do have an idea, a resolution that you have presented to committee prior to convention time, and for one of very, very many, uh, one of many various reasons, it has been uh, laid aside and hasn't actually been read, uh, entered as a resolution. If it is thrown out, in other words, you still have the prerogative to bring this resolution presented on the floor. And if uh, two-thirds of the voting delegate body uh, okay it, vote for it, the resolution is uh, inserted into the organization. Then becomes part of the policy of the it organization. Does. And uh, this is uh, a democracy in its truest form. And uh, I might say that as a member of the organization, I'm looking forward to the National Convention and uh, do now hereby extend to any viewer, listener within range today to become a member or a visitor at National Convention in Milwaukee. Uh, actually, Jim, uh, whether, uh, we of course select the delegates from each county. And even though uh, you're, if you're a member of the uh, National Farmers Organization, and are not a delegate, you're still welcome to come to the convention and eligible, and there's a visitor section for members who are not delegates, for uh, non-members, farmers, and also for city folks or anyone else that might be interested in the uh, procedure of the NFO as an organization. Now going on uh, a little bit uh, farther, uh, Maynard, I'll turn to you at this point. Uh, uh, specifically, uh, where is the convention going to be at in Milwaukee and so on? you have the details on this? Yes, Ed, the convention will be at the Arena Auditorium uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, December 7th and 8th. That's on Wednesday and Thursday. And uh, it will uh, uh, go into session at 10 a.m. with registration between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. each day, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, a couple of points in regard to the discussion previous uh, uh, everyone is welcome at this convention. It is free. There's no uh, charge. Uh, anyone can come regardless of their occupation or their residence or their business. Uh, now, uh, th there is a visitor section at which uh, anyone can go to. Uh, the delegates uh, section of the uh, auditorium is, of course, restricted to those who are uh, bona fide uh, elected delegates from their respective counties. And uh, another point in regard to uh, election, particularly president and vice president, uh, these uh, people are nominated from the floor of the convention by the delegates. Any delegate is eligible to make a nomination for president or vice president and uh, this, is, this is the way that these people are nominated. They cannot be nominated through a nominating committee or a sifting committee. Uh, this, this way we uh, 
is uh, one more evidence of the uh, absolute democratic system that we have in NFO, which we are so proud of. And uh, the only requ requirement to be a delegate is that he be an NFO member. And of course, to be an NFO member, you have to be engaged in the production of agricultural products with, uh, with the additional requirement that you have to have a major portion, a major portion of your income from the sale of farm products to be a delegate or to be elected or appointed to any position in the NFO. Well, this is interesting because uh, what this does then is it makes it uh, the uh, NFO an organization that couldn't be, uh, we'll say, controlled by a group of outsiders and so on. Uh, they have to be uh, uh, farmers with a major part of their income from farming then. I've noticed uh, at the conventions of the NFO that I've been to in past years that there's a lot of interest in these conventions. There is, uh, 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 they're interested in the business that's being carried on and there's very little, uh, during the sessions, the business sessions and uh, so on, uh, everybody is there and they're not off uh, shopping downtown and so on. And uh, why would you say this is, Jim, mainly? I think that uh, the main reason for this, Ed, is that now, for once in the history of American agriculture, farmers have come to realize the fact that they have to do something about marketing, about selling their production. And this is actually what you're doing when you go to national convention. You help set down the guidelines, approve uh, further guidelines and uh, new ideas that you will uh, insert into the organization in the coming year. And farmers have a definite interest and desire to attend national convention and attend the sessions as they take place at convention time. And uh, undoubtedly, they, uh, there is uh, some social activity too, to a degree. But by and large, most of the business is agricultural marketing business, the National Farmers Organization. And its uh, delegates take a real heart and soul attitude towards it every year. And like Willis pointed out earlier, you can feel the pulse of it rising already. Uh, I think, uh, Willis, at this point, uh, we haven't hit too much on the uh, various uh, committee reports that are made at uh, each of these conventions. And would you want to go into a little more detail on this? Yes, I think so, Ed. Uh, our committee people are elected at district conventions. <clears throat> we do for the purpose of, uh, of electing committees, we divide our areas along congressional district lines. Each of these districts in turn has an annual convention and they elect their people that they wish to serve them on the various committees that will function at the state and the national conventions. These committees include uh, bylaws, they include resolutions, vote and tally committee, uh, credentials committee, and arrangements committee. All of these people are elected uh, from the district level and they in turn go to the state convention to serve there and go to the national convention to serve there. Uh, I might point out also, Willis, that as far as the uh, by bylaws and resolutions committee in particular, that there's a considerable amount of time spent by these committees ahead of the uh, convention in working out all the details and so on. Well, th these people uh, work a full two days ahead of the actual convention itself. Uh, they will report into Milwaukee early Monday morning on December 5th, and they'll be put to work immediately. They will work uh, through the days, the 5th and the 6th, and uh, hoping to get all of their reports ready for the convention body the morning of the 7th. So they have a real full schedule. I think at this point, folks, uh, we'll just ask each of the uh, panelists what their uh, impression of each of the conventions is and why they particularly uh, are interested in, in the convention this year and what it means to them as individual farmers. We'll just start off with Willis at this point. Well, of course, Ed, I've got a particular interest uh, in this convention. Being a member of the National Board of Directors uh, for the past year and renominated at our Iowa State Convention for the next year, with the blessings of the National Convention, I will serve again as a member of the National Board. So this puts me in a position where I must take an interest in agriculture from New York to Idaho and from Michigan and Minnesota down into Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, uh, all over the Midwest. And we when we talk about marketing products from all these places, 
When we talk about dairy, we talk about grain, we talk about meat, we talk about flax, we talk about sugar beets, uh, even tobacco from Kentucky, uh, dry edible beans, all of these things uh, are included in our program. It's very broad, it's very comprehensive, uh, and I'm real anxious to get to Milwaukee for a few days this winter and talk with the people from the various states, find out what their needs are, what their desires are, so that uh, with the hope that I can represent them in a capable manner for the next year. Jim, it's real easy to, for me to tell you, Ed, why I'm looking forward to National Convention time once again is that for once in my lifetime as a farmer, hogs have remained at a relatively stable price from one convention time until the next. And I will admit that it's uh, the first year, this last year, is the first year that this has even happened since our farmers or National Farmers Organization was born. But this is quite evident that our organization has added strength and, st and stability to the hog market and uh, me being a uh, hog producer, I'm uh, glad to see this come about uh, through the efforts of fellows like Willis Rowell, Maynard Rafferty, and yourself, uh, and the other farmer friends of mine through, uh, throughout the Midwest from the various states that will attend this national convention. We're working together cooperatively, have added strength and stability to the livestock market and the grain and meat and dairy departments. And so this is my primary reason why I'm looking forward to going back to the National Convention and helping formulate additional policy that will carry us on to our ultimate goal. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the uh, hog uh, price level, and which has been uh, real good for the past year, and no doubt largely because of the efforts of the NFO. And I think this would be a, a good uh, thing to point out to the other people that raise the other commodities, that uh, they could probably do the same thing for their commodities that they put the time and effort into it that the uh, hog producers have in terms of marketing together and selling together and so on. Uh, Maynard, what was your, your main uh, impressions as far as the convention is concerned? Well, Ed, if I may, I'd like to quote for just a bit from the uh, preamble to the bylaws, and this to me puts it in a nutshell, why NFO? We hold that permitting the processor to set the price on the sale of commodities raised by the American farmer is a complete reverse of the tradition of the American system of government, which normally permits the manufacturer of products to set the prices of the products that he produces. We hold these conditions to be utterly at variance with the spirit of justice and the needs of the American farmer. We believe that the right of the farmer to organize for his mutual protection is compatible with the rights of other segments of our society to organize for their mutual protection. And as Jim says, we see the progress not only in hogs, we have seen it also in grains and milk, uh, not to the extent that we have in hogs, but we're moving. And we go to this convention to visit with people from all over the agriculture part of the country to see what they're doing and see how we can mutually move together in cooperation. Our time is drawing to close, and on behalf of the panelists, we want to thank you for watching U.S. Farm Report today, and we'd like to have you watch again next Sunday at the same time, and we'll go into details on uh, many of the things we weren't able to cover today. And keep in mind, both members and non-members and city people, that the, uh, the National Convention of the NFO will be this seven, the 7th and 8th of December at Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at the uh, Auditorium Arena. We will see you there. Thank you. Farmers for a healthy and stable farm economy join the NFO. The National Farmers Organization is dedicated to raising and stabilizing farm prices through collective bargaining. Tune in again next week at the same time for another edition of U.S. Farm Report, a weekly program that delves into the many vital issues affecting American agriculture today. U.S. Farm Report, a rural area's public relations program, is brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this television area. For more information on the National Farmers Organization, contact the county organization in your county or write NFO, Corning, Iowa. Farmers, remember collective bargaining is the key to farmer success. Join the NFO today.